This is my happy little jack-o'-lantern shirt. Recently I replaced the upper ball joints on this truck. Here's the lower ball joints. They really don't look like they're in that bad of shape. So we're going to leave those. But I bought a bunch of stuff so we're going to replace whatever this thing's called. It's got an arm going here and an arm going there. Same on the other side. It's connected to this arm. Which links it to the power steering pump. We're going to replace this too. And then the arm on the other side. Penetrating loop. So my general approach with these pickle forks, it seems to be working for me, is I'll kind of get them started with just a regular hammer to the point where they stick in there and I'm not worried about them falling out. And then I'll start tapping on them with this 12 pound hammer and they seem to pop right out with a minimal effort. Well, you know, sort of, sort of minimal. Still a pain in the butt. It was hard to film all the beating off I was doing. I'm surprised I didn't bend my rod I was beating it so hard. After I was whacking it for about 30 seconds, it just popped off. Sometimes you might have to beat it harder than you do other times. To get it to pop off, I mean. If you don't get the nut off, you might bend your shaft. You ever hurt your hand while you're twisting a nut? I mean, seriously, when was the last time you whacked your rod so hard your nut popped off? I found it's fairly important to select the right fork because some of them, like this would be too small and it would end up hanging, hanging up on this flared end. But it's important to get it tight so it hits, you know, solid metal on both the upper and lower part and is able to actually spread it out. This one's probably a little too big. This one will probably get the trick done. Pitman arm. That's not what it's called. The stubby end of this tie rod, the shorter tie rod, goes to the outside of the vehicle, connecting with just behind the calipers on the brakes. And this goes inside, connecting to this bar. Uh, the power steering stuff's pretty obvious, so the idler arm doesn't connect to the power steering, but the pitman arm does. So that's easy. But yeah, make sure that the long arm is connected to the rod that ties the two together and the short arm goes into right behind the brake caliper. Pretty sure I just ran a stop sign. Yeah. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little spot where I filed it. It's a little shinier there. The important thing is find a way to mark the new one in the length of the old one because that'll approximate your alignment. That way you can make it to an alignment shop and they can, you know, fine tune it with all their fancy equipment. But this will get you close. At this point, I'm putting a chisel in there and hammering it and you can see it's kind of splitting. So I'm going to keep on doing that and it should relieve a lot of the pressure off of this, off of the pitman arm. And it should be able to fall in a little bit. Okay, I got these all connected in one unit. It's all just finger tied on. I'm going to stick it up under there and start installing the new stuff. Okay, the steering wheel is basically straight. So now the trick is to make the tire straight. So if you try to eyeball this, so that the tire, both sides of the front tire, kind of plane out with the rear tire. You can see that this side actually looks pretty close. We go over to this side, see what we have. So this side, there's planing with the back of the front tire. The front of the, of the front tire is all the way over here. So that means that we got to adjust this rod out. Here's this rod we have to adjust out. Stupid sun glare. So to adjust it out, the twist like so. What that's doing, because the one is reverse thread, so that's extending it's extending these arms so that it makes it longer, which will push the front of the tire out, so hopefully, if we tweak it enough, the front of the tire will plane out with the back of the front tire and the rear tire. 
so I did it too far. So now I got to back it off a little bit. Now I got this, what I think is pretty close. At this point, get a 15 millimeter and torque this thing about back down without twisting it. Only thing I have left to do is put in the cotter pins on these castle nuts because everything is adjusted the way that I think I want it. If I drive in and it feels funny, then I'll readjust it. But anyways, don't forget those because these can and will work themselves off. But I lost most of them, so I gotta go down to the hardware store and buy some more. This is going straight down the road. So, even though my tires are straight in relation to the rear tires, they're obviously not straight in relation to the steering wheel. So, that means I gotta push that side out and pull this side in, and that should be good. So I'll do that. <laughs> 